The Beverly Hillbillies, a poignant comedy interwoven with moral tales, continues to resonate with sentimental viewers. Originating in 1962, the series propelled its cast to success, earning seven Emmy nominations throughout its duration. Regrettably, the passage of over half a decade has taken its toll, and the chance to encounter those familiar faces has faded away as they departed one by one, succumbing to illness and the inevitability of a ging. This video will unveil the tragic demises of the actors from the Beverly Hillbillies. Do not overlook this poignant exploration. Buddy Ebsen Buddy Ebsen left an indelible mark on the American entertainment industry through his versatile career that spanned an impressive seven decades. Widely recognized as an actor and dancer, he gained fame for his iconic roles, notably as Jed Clampett in the CBS television sitcom The Beverly Hillbillies, 1962-1971, and as the titular character in the television detective drama Barnaby Jones. 1973-1980. Ebsen's journey into the world of entertainment began as a dancer, and he made his foray into films with Broadway Melody of 1936. His talent as a dancer was further showcased when he appeared alongside child star Shirley Temple in Captain January, 1936. However, fate took an unexpected turn when he was cast in The Wizard of Oz, 1939, originally as the Scarecrow. Prior to filming, the role was altered to that of the Tin Man. Unfortunately, Ebsen's health suffered during production due to the aluminum dust in his makeup, leading to his withdrawal from the film. Throughout his career, Ebsen demonstrated his versatility by taking on diverse roles. He shared the screen with Maureen O'Hara in They Met in Argentina, 1941, and appeared alongside June Havoc in Sing Your Worries Away, 1942. In the classic Breakfast at Tiffany's, 1961, he portrayed Doc Golightly, the much older husband of Audrey Hepburn's character. Before attaining widespread recognition with The Beverly Hill Billies, Ebsen had already established a successful television career. A notable highlight was his role as Davy Crockett's sidekick, George Russell in Walt Disney's Davy Crockett miniseries, 1953-54. This early television success set the stage for Ebsen's later accomplishments, cementing his status as a beloved figure in the entertainment world. Buddy Ebsen's illustrious career, spanning an incredible seven decades, came to a poignant close in 1999. His final acting appearance was in the animated television show King of the Hill, where he portrayed the character Chet Elderson. As the curtain fell on his acting career, it marked the end of an era for a man who had left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. The decision to retire from acting was not made lightly, as Ebsen's advancing age and declining health became significant factors. The wear and tear of a lifetime spent in the limelight, coupled with the toll of the years, led him to step away from the profession that had defined much of his life. In the twilight of his days, Buddy Ebsen chose to embrace a quieter existence in California, away from the hustle and bustle of the entertainment world. Retreating into a more private life, he spent his time surrounded by the serene landscapes of the West Coast. It was a well-deserved respite for a man who had given so much to his craft. On July 6, 2003, at the remarkable age of 95, Buddy Ebsen bid his final farewell to the world. The news of his passing reverberated through the entertainment community, with actors from all corners of the country mourning the loss of a true legend. Colleagues and fans alike fondly remembered the vibrant life he brought to the acting industry, acknowledging the depth of his contributions. Buddy Ebsen's legacy endured not just through the characters he portrayed on screen, but through the lasting impression he left on film and television. His body of work became a timeless testament to his talent and dedication, influencing generations of actors who followed in his footsteps.
As the industry mourned the passing of a giant, it also celebrated the enduring impact of a man whose passion for storytelling had left an indelible mark on the cinematic and television landscape. Buddy Ebsen's contributions would continue to resonate, ensuring that his influence would be felt for years to come. Donna Douglas Best known for her iconic portrayal of Ellie Mae, Clampett on the immensely popular television series The Beverly Hillbillies, 1962-1971, Douglas showcased her talent, charm, and versatility in a role that would become synonymous with her name. As Ellie Mae, the sweet and naively charming daughter of the Clampett family, Donna Douglas captured the hearts of audiences across the nation. Her portrayal of the country girl transitioning to the upscale lifestyle of Beverly Hills became a defining element of the show's success. Following the conclusion of her acting career, Donna Douglas embarked on a diverse range of endeavors. Transitioning into the real estate industry, she became a licensed real estate agent, showcasing her business acumen and adaptability beyond the realm of entertainment. However, her artistic spirit endured as she also pursued a career as a gospel singer, using her voice to inspire and uplift. Douglas expanded her reach as an inspirational speaker, sharing her experiences and insights with audiences eager to hear from the woman who brought Ellie Mae to life. Her warmth and genuine demeanor made her a sought-after speaker, connecting with people on a personal level. Beyond her performances on screen and her professional ventures, Donna Douglas revealed another facet of her creativity. She became an author. Writing books for both children and adults, she demonstrated her storytelling prowess and shared her unique perspective on life. Her literary contributions reflected her ability to resonate with diverse audiences, showcasing her talent for connecting with readers of all ages. In the years following her varied career pursuits, Donna Douglas maintained a vibrant and fulfilling life. Beyond her commitments to celebrity appearances and speeches, she found joy in simple pleasures and cherished moments with loved ones. A passionate gardener, Douglas dedicated time to cultivating the beauty of nature, perhaps finding solace and tranquility amidst the blossoms she nurtured. Her enduring connection with fans was evident in her dedication to answering fan mail, a testament to her appreciation for the support and admiration she received throughout her career. Despite the demands of a busy schedule, she remained connected to those who had followed her journey from the hills of Beverly to her subsequent ventures. In addition to her professional engagements, Douglas cherished moments spent with friends and family. Whether basking in the warmth of shared laughter or creating lasting memories, she valued the bonds that transcended the spotlight. This commitment to personal connections reflected the down-to-earth nature that endeared her to so many. Tragically, on January 1, 2015, Donna Douglas succumbed to pancreatic cancer at Baton Rouge General Hospital. The news of her passing marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy that reached far beyond her iconic role as Ellie Mae Clampett. At the age of 82, she had become an enduring symbol of talent, resilience, and grace. Donna Douglas found her final resting place in Bluff Creek Cemetery in East Feliciana Parish, Louisiana. The serene surroundings of her interment reflected the peace and tranquility she had sought throughout her life. Her niece by marriage, Charlene Smith, shared insights into Douglas's later years, noting her return to East Baton Rouge Parish around 2005. Describing her aunt with fondness, Smith emphasized Donna's perpetual happiness, beauty, and the timeless elegance that characterized her presence. Despite the passage of time, Donna Douglas retained an ageless charm and an ever-present grace. Irene Ryan Irene Ryan made an indelible mark on the American entertainment landscape as a versatile actress and comedian. Her career, which spanned vaudeville, radio, film, television, and Broadway, showcased her remarkable talent and comedic prowess. Born on October 17, 1902, and departing the world on April 26, 1973, Irene Ryan left an enduring legacy in the annals of entertainment history. 
Ryan's career flourished across various mediums, demonstrating her adaptability and skill. However, she is perhaps best remembered for her iconic portrayal of Daisy Mae Granny Moses on the long-running TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, 1962-1971. In this beloved show, she played the spirited mother-in-law of Buddy Ebsen's character, Jed Clampett. The chemistry between Ryan and Ebsen added a delightful layer to the series, contributing significantly to its success. For her outstanding performance as Granny Moses, Irene Ryan received recognition with Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series in both 1963 and 1964. These nominations were a testament to her comedic timing, charismatic presence, and the depth she brought to her character. Irene Ryan's journey into the world of entertainment began at the tender age of 11 when she showcased her talent by winning $3, equivalent to approximately $90.97 today, in an amateur singing contest at the Valencia Theater in San Francisco. This early triumph set the stage for a remarkable career that would span vaudeville, radio, film, and television. At the age of 20, Irene took on a new role both personally and professionally, by marrying writer-comedian Tim Ryan. The couple became a dynamic duo in vaudeville, captivating audiences with their Dumb Dora routine, a style exemplified by legendary performers George Burns and Gracie Allen. Billed as Tim and Irene, formerly Tim Ryan and Irene Noblette. They starred in 11 short comedies for educational pictures between 1935 and 1937. These films served as vehicles for their vaudevillian banter, with Irene often playing the flighty young woman who comically drove Tim to distraction. Their routines, including Tim's frequent exclamation, Will you stop? became catchphrases, and one even inspired the title of one of their shorts. In 1936, Irene and Tim substituted for Jack Benny, showcasing their talents on NBC's Red Network in the Jell-O Summer Show. Despite their professional success, the couple's personal life took a different turn, leading to their divorce in 1942. However, Irene retained the surname Ryan, a decision that would become significant as she continued her career. After the divorce, Irene embarked on a diverse career, touring with Bob Hope and contributing to his radio program for two years. She played notable roles, including portraying Edgar Kennedy's wife in two RKO short films in 1943 and appearing in the country music film Oh My Darling Clementine the same year. Reuniting with Tim for four feature films, the last being the 1944 musical feature Hot Rhythm with Donna Drake showcased the enduring chemistry of their comedic partnership. In 1946, Irene entered into her second marriage with Harold E. Knox, who worked in film production. Although this marriage ended in divorce in 1961, Irene continued to make her mark in the entertainment industry. Throughout the late 1940s and early 1950s, she appeared in motion pictures, often portraying fussy or nervous women. Simultaneously, she showcased her versatility by joining the cast of The Jack Carson Show on CBS Radio in 1946, playing the role of a neighborhood storekeeper with a combination candy shop and lending library. The transition to television marked another chapter in Irene Ryan's career. Her first sitcom appearance occurred in January 1955 on an episode of the CBS series The Danny Thomas Show. She continued to grace the small screen, guest starring in various shows such as The Real McCoys in 1959 and My Three Sons in 1962. Notably, she played Cynthia Boyle in three episodes of the 1960-1961 CBS sitcom Bringing Up Buddy, starring Frank Aletter. In 1966, Irene Ryan added a game show contestant to her list of accomplishments, appearing as a contestant celebrity guest star on the popular game show Password. Irene Ryan's life took an unforeseen turn as her health battles became intertwined with the consequences of a long-standing smoking habit. Known to have a significant and, by some accounts, 
a severe smoking addiction, her castmate Max Bear Jr. candidly remarked in interviews that she smoked like a chimney. This habit, unfortunately, played a role in the unfolding tragedy that would mark the final act of her remarkable career. In 1973, tragedy struck. While Irene Ryan was in the midst of performing on stage in Pippin, the toll of her unhealthy habits manifested in a stroke that abruptly halted her performance. Recognizing the severity of the situation, she followed her doctor's orders and promptly flew back to California, where she was admitted to the hospital for urgent medical attention. The subsequent diagnosis was a grim revelation. Irene Ryan was found to be battling a malignant brain tumor, specifically identified as glioblastoma, an aggressive and formidable adversary. The discovery of this inoperable condition shed light on the health challenges she had been silently confronting. As the days unfolded, Irene Ryan's health rapidly declined, and on April 26, 1973, at the age of 70, she breathed her last at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica, California. The causes of her death were officially recorded as glioblastoma and arteriosclerotic heart disease, underscoring the toll these health issues had taken on her. The news of Irene Ryan's passing reverberated through the tight-knit community of her former castmates from the Beverly Hillbillies. Deeply saddened by the loss of their talented and beloved colleague, they mourned the passing of a woman whose vibrant spirit had enriched the set and brought joy to audiences worldwide. The camaraderie and warmth that defined their time together on the iconic television series were now shadowed by the somber reality of Irene Ryan's departure. Nancy Culp Nancy Culp's roots trace back to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where she was born to Robert Tilden and Marjorie C. Nay Snyder, Culp. As their only child, Nancy grew up in a family where her father was a traveling salesman, and her mother initially served as a schoolteacher before later assuming the role of a principal. The Culp family's journey led them from Mifflintown, Pennsylvania, to the vibrant city of Miami, in Miami-Dade County, Florida, sometime before 1935. In pursuit of higher education, Nancy Culp graduated with a bachelor's degree in journalism from Florida State College for Women in 1943. Undeterred by the challenges of her time, she continued her academic pursuits, delving into a master's degree in English and French at the University of Miami. During her university years, Culp became a member of the sorority P Beta Phi, fostering connections that would endure throughout her life. Even in her early years, Nancy Culp demonstrated her gift for communication and writing. In the 1940s, she worked as a feature writer for the Miami Beach Tropics newspaper, where she penned profiles of notable celebrities such as Clark Gable and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. This early exposure to the world of journalism hinted at the diverse talents that would later define her career. Nancy Culp's entry into the world of entertainment marked the beginning of a remarkable journey. Her portrayal of Miss Jane Hathaway, the efficient and intelligent secretary to Milburn Drysdale, the banker in The Beverly Hillbillies, endeared her to audiences. Culp's comedic timing and memorable character contributed significantly to the success of the show, which aired from 1962 to 1971. Beyond her acting career, Culp showcased her versatility as a writer and comedian. Her ability to bring humor to the screen resonated with viewers, making her a beloved figure in the world of television comedy. After the conclusion of The Beverly Hillbillies, Nancy Jane Culp embarked on a surprising and notable chapter of her life that showcased her commitment to public service. In an unexpected turn of events, she decided to run for Congress, seeking to transition from the entertainment industry to the political arena. However, the journey into politics took an unexpected twist when her former castmate, Buddy Ebsen, emerged as her opponent in the race. The campaign for Congress pitted Culp against Ebsen, creating a unique dynamic given their shared history on the Beverly Hillbillies. Despite the camaraderie they had experienced on set, the political arena saw them on opposite sides. In an unforeseen turn, Culp faced opposition from Ebsen and the race took on a level of intrigue that captured the public's attention. 
Ultimately, Nancy Culp faced defeat in the political race, but her resilience and dedication to public service did not waver. Following the election, she made a significant life choice, moving to Palm Springs, California. In this new chapter of her life, she redirected her energy towards philanthropy, dedicating her time and efforts to various charitable organizations. This transition reflected her ongoing commitment to making a positive impact on society, even in the face of political setbacks. However, a shadow loomed over Culp's later years, as she received a devastating diagnosis in 1990, cancer. The news of her health condition marked a challenging chapter in her life, but Culp faced it with the same courage and grace that had defined her career. Despite the battles with illness, she continued to contribute to the causes she held dear. Tragically, on February 3, 1991, at the age of 69, Nancy Jane Culp passed away. Her legacy extended beyond the laughter she brought to audiences as Miss Jane Hathaway. It encompassed her political aspirations, her dedication to philanthropy, and the courage she displayed in the face of a formidable health challenge. The loss of Nancy Culp left an indelible mark on the entertainment and political spheres, and her memory lives on as a testament to the multifaceted woman who enriched the lives of those she encountered. Bay Benaderet Beatrice Benaderet, a luminary in the realm of American entertainment, was not only an actress, but also a gifted comedian whose career spanned over three decades. Born in New York City and raised in San Francisco, she initially found her artistic calling in Bay Area theater and radio before making a significant impact on Hollywood. Benadere's journey in the entertainment industry commenced during the golden age of radio, where she established herself as a prominent voiceover artist. Her distinctive vocal talents and ability to embody various characters made her a sought-after talent, leading to collaborations with comedy legends such as Jack Benny, Burns and Allen, and Lucille Ball. During this period, she became the leading voice of female characters in Warner Bros. Animated cartoons, showcasing her versatility in dialect and characterization. Transitioning seamlessly from radio to television, Beatrice Benadere became a familiar face on the small screen. Her notable contributions to situation comedies earned her widespread recognition. Notably, from 1950 to 1958, she played a pivotal role in The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show, earning two Emmy Award nominations for Best Supporting Actress. The 1960s marked a prolific period in Benadere's television career, as she secured regular roles in four different series showcasing her adaptability and comedic prowess. Among these, she became an integral part of the commercial successes The Beverly Hillbillies and The Flintstones. However, it was her best-known role as Kate Bradley in Petticoat Junction that solidified her status as a television icon. During a routine checkup in 1963, Beatrice Benadere's health took a serious turn when a tumor was discovered in one of her lungs. Although initially not visible during the follow-up visit, by November 1967, the tumor had returned and grown in size. Despite the grave diagnosis, Benadere, then filming the fifth season of Petticoat Junction, delayed immediate exploratory surgery, fearing the impact her absence would have on the show. Finally, on November 26, 1967, Beatrice underwent surgery at Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles, only to discover that the tumor was inoperable. Diagnosed with lung cancer, she embarked on a challenging journey of treatment. Benadere underwent six weeks of radiation treatment using a linear particle accelerator at Stanford University Medical Center. A longtime smoker, she had cut down her multiple pack a day habit following her initial checkups and quit entirely after her surgery. The initial phase of treatment appeared successful, concluding in January 1968. Having missed 10 episodes of Petticoat Junction during her recovery, her character, Kate Bradley, was described vaguely in the storyline as being out of town. 
Rosemary DeCamp and Shirley Mitchell filled in as temporary mother figures during her absence. Benadaret returned for the March 35th season finale titled Kate's Homecoming, giving hope that she would continue her recovery. However, five months later, after shooting three episodes of the sixth season, Benadaret's health deteriorated, forcing her to take leave from the series. Initial plans involved recording her voice to be inserted into future episodes. Unfortunately, her condition declined dramatically. On September 26, 1968, chest pains related to her illness necessitated her return to the hospital for the final time. The Valley Has a Baby, the fourth show of the sixth season, marked Benadere's last episode. It featured only her voice, with her stand-in filmed from the rear. Beatrice Benaderet passed away on October 13, 1968, succumbing to lung cancer and pneumonia at Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles. She was entombed in Valhalla Memorial Park Cemetery in North Hollywood. The impact of this loss was compounded when, on October 17, four days after Beatrice's death and the day after her funeral, her husband, Eugene Etwombly, also passed away at the age of 54, suffering a massive heart attack. He was interred beside her, marking the end of a profound and tragic chapter for the family. The duo loss left a void not only in the lives of those who knew and loved them, but also in the broader realms of entertainment and beyond. Raymond Thomas Bailey Raymond Thomas Bailey was a versatile American actor and comedian whose career spanned the Broadway stage, films, and television. His name became synonymous with the character Milburn Drysdale, a role that left an indelible mark on the iconic television series The Beverly Hillbillies. Bailey's journey into the world of entertainment began on the prestigious Broadway stage where he honed his craft and showcased his acting prowess. His ability to captivate audiences translated seamlessly to the silver screen, earning him a place in the realm of film. However, it was in the burgeoning medium of television that Bailey would etch his name into the annals of popular culture. The role that defined Raymond Bailey's television legacy was that of Milburn Drysdale, a character whose persona as a greedy banker provided ample comedic fodder on The Beverly Hillbillies. The series, which ran from 1962 to 1971, followed the escapades of the Clampett family as they navigated the unfamiliar and opulent terrain of Beverly Hills after striking it rich. As the Clampett's financial guardian, Milburn Drysdale's interactions with the unsophisticated yet endearing family became a central element of the show's comedic dynamic. Raymond Bailey's portrayal of Milburn Drysdale showcased his comedic timing and versatility as an actor. The character's constant attempts to manage the Clampett's newfound wealth, particularly the eccentric Jed Clampett, played by Buddy Ebsen, provided audiences with humorous moments that contributed significantly to the show's enduring popularity. Beyond his iconic role on the Beverly Hill Billies, Bailey's career spanned various projects, reflecting his adaptability as a performer. His contributions to the entertainment industry were not confined to a single role or medium, rather. He navigated the evolving landscape of show business with skill and charisma. However, Raymond Thomas Bailey faced a formidable adversary, Alzheimer's disease. As the final episodes of The Beverly Hillbillies were being filmed, Bailey began exhibiting the early signs of this debilitating condition. The once vibrant actor, known for his wit and comedic timing, found himself grappling with a disease that would alter the course of his life. Following the cancellation of The Beverly Hillbillies, Raymond Bailey's on-screen appearances became increasingly sparse. The challenges posed by Alzheimer's limited his ability to continue in the profession that had brought him acclaim. Despite this, he managed to make a few film appearances, showcasing his resilience in the face of a formidable health struggle. By 1975, however, the progression of Alzheimer's disease forced Raymond Bailey into retirement. 
The demands of the industry and the complexities of his health compelled him to step away from the spotlight that had defined much of his life. In the ensuing years, Bailey withdrew from public life, spending much of his time as a recluse. While he may have retreated from the public eye, there were occasional moments of connection with his past. Among those who remained in touch with Bailey during these later years was one of his former castmates, Nancy Culp. This connection provided a bridge to the past, allowing him to maintain ties with the people and memories that had shaped his career. The final chapter of Raymond Bailey's life unfolded sadly, marked by the challenges of Alzheimer's disease. On April 15, 1980, at the age of 75, Bailey's journey came to an end as he succumbed to a heart attack. The passing of this talented actor and comedian marked not only the conclusion of a storied career, but also the end of a life, marked by both triumphs and personal struggles. What do you think about the departure of the cast of the Beverly Hillbillies? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.